ファンナ生倉剣張鎧金槌ちビタかんざしノコギリはかりメッキ銃そしてそれらの凶悪さはよく聞こえた。Welcome everyone to the 24th episode of Takisoba with a review for Kanta Nagatari. I'm the anime casual Nate, as always, joined here with the anime lover Malesh. Hey, Kanta Nagatari always interested me as an anime fan due to it being made by the same author as the Monogatari series. It nailed my expectations of being an excellent work that made me consider it one of the best anime to come out this decade. Kanta Nagatari debuted in January of 2010 with an unusual 12 episode run where each episode is almost an hour long and aired only once a month until December. I've never seen an anime with such an airing schedule or long episode length, and for this show, it was made to imitate the light novel release style in Japan. For the most part, I thought the long length was used well, but this anime is extremely dialogue heavy. Several minutes will go by where no one does anything other than just stay in one place and talk. It could get slow at times, but there is no true filler as something major is accomplished in every episode. To me, this anime did feel like reading a book. I'll let Malesh explain the straightforward plot. The story revolves around the journey of Chichika Yasuri, the seventh head of the Kyoto Ryu fighting style, and Togami, a strategist for the Shogunate. They are tasked to collect the twelve perfected swords created by the infamous Chigazaki Kiki. These swords contain great power and must be collected to make sure there's no rebellion against the Shogunate. From there, each episode focuses on the duo's task to collect the swords. The swords vary in abilities from being a fragile sword that needs precise strikes or a sword that is a full suit of armor. The wielders of these swords are very unique figures that have interesting motivations for why they use these cursed swords. It was fun going through each episode seeing what new strange swords and wielders we were going to see Chichika and Togami fight. Overall, the story was enjoyable enough and it created great characters and fights that made it fun to watch for 50 minutes. The ending had a nice conclusion as well. Our two main characters, Chichika and Togami, are both compelling characters and have awesome development throughout their journey. Chichika grew up isolated from the world, having only his older sister and father help shaping his worldview, which leads him to considering himself a sword. When he first meets Togami, he acts detached from the world and is apathetic towards the people he fights. However, as he continues meeting interesting people, he starts taking parts of them with him and becomes more human. Togami is brash, arrogant, and has a jealous streak, the perfect foil for Chichika. She aged heavily in developing him as the two start falling for each other, and you see Chichika start caring about people. Togami herself is quite an interesting character, especially with her amazing backstory. The two interacted beautifully, and it was often the highlight of the show for me. Now, Nate will discuss the side characters. For the most part, the main antagonist of each episode was either killed or left alone once the sword is collected, so you don't really see much development from them. Throughout the show, there are still recurring characters, such as the animal themed ninja groups from the Maniwa, and an ex ninja who is commanded by a princess to take the twelve swords from Togame. The interactions were very interesting for everyone with Togame and Shichika, and we didn't really need any major development from anyone else. I really enjoyed seeing Shichika develop his own values and motives after learning from many people on his journey. Now I'll discuss the animation. Kata Nagatari was produced by Studio White Fox, who also animated Steinsgate, a personal favorite of mine. However, the actual animation in this show is very slim. As I said before, a lot of time in each episode is devoted to everyone just not moving and talking. And even when there is animation, there is very little spectacle, and a lot of visual shortcuts were taken during the fight sequences. I suspect the budget was quite low, but the art style actually makes up for it. The show looks great, and the minimal animation kind of works in its favor. I agree with Nate that White Fox did take some shortcuts with Kata Nagatari, but it still holds up tremendously well. I love the art style, some of the animation for the action scenes were handled quite nicely. The character designs in particular caught my eye, and I felt they were completely distinct from the hundreds of anime I've seen before. They added to the uniqueness of this show. The sound of Rakata Nagatari was music to my ears. To start off, there are two openings that are both banging. As for the endings, there was one for every episode. I liked a majority of them as they complemented the tone of the episode. The rest of the soundtrack was funky fresh. There were a plethora of character themes that I liked, including the wacky song that I played when Chichika and Togami were talking. And I have to mention that the legendary Lotus Juice was also in the soundtrack. I adored how eccentric it all was. 
As for the voice acting, I liked all the roles for the most part. Shichika and Togami were perfectly casted, and I could recognize some famous Japanese voice actors. I also love the ever-changing ending themes. This is the only anime where I let all of them play through. I was really impressed with this soundtrack. It was diverse and enhanced the show with every piece. However, I disliked the voices, but not the actual acting. I can recognize good acting, but just the sound of most of these voices really annoyed me to the core. It is a minor complaint, but I've never desired any other anime to be dubbed more than this one. Gata Nagatari is a must watch for any fans of the Monogatari series, and for any anime fan that wants to see a fresh anime that has some of the best characters in the genre. This was a unique show that I'll consider one of the best this decade. In general, I also really like this show. I felt personally unsatisfied with the ending, but I won't give it flack. My biggest issue was the sheer amount of dialogue, often with little breaks. Due to the subtitles, my eyes were glued to the bottom of the screen, and I couldn't look away for just a second because I'd missed something. For this reason, I will not recommend this show to pure anime newcomers, the subtitles are just too much. But if you think you can get past that, I would absolutely recommend this anime to everyone in general. Unfortunately, Kata Nagatari cannot be streamed or even digitally rented. If you want to watch this show, just bite the bullet and go where Google takes you. As always, if you've already watched Kata Nagatari, click the first link in the description for a post-view discussion, which includes spoilers. Thanks for watching our review of Kata Nagatari. Please give it a like or a comment for feedback. We'll see you guys next time with a review for the anime film Summer Wars. Ciao.